If you haven't seen an iceberg video before, allow me to explain how they work. Iceberg images like these consist of many layers. The most common knowledge is at the top layer of the iceberg, and the further the layers go down, the more unknown and dark it gets. Now that I have explained what an iceberg is, let's talk about Infectious Smile. Infectious Smile is a Roblox game created by Laughable Haha on November 21st, 2020, and it has gained, as of this video, 432 million visits. The goal of the game is to either stop the infection or cause the infection. It may seem like a pretty simple game, but underneath there are secrets, lore, and many theories surrounding the game. I will try my best to explain all of these topics on the bit iceberg. Please keep in mind the iceberg is from January and not up to date with the most recent update. Rob is the very first NPC to be added into Infectious Smile. Rob sits behind a desk at spawn and applies the humans with bats, bottles, and various tools for them to protect themselves from the Smilers. When picking up an item from him, he will say something like, Here you go, or stay safe will ya? But when you try to take an item from him that you already have, he will deny you by saying things like, No means no, or nah. Rob is also able to wear players' face accessories, but I'm not sure how you get this to happen. The winning smile is a free item on the Roblox avatar shop, and is the face that is used for the game Infectious Smile. This face was most likely used because of how unsettling it looks. It may also have been used because of memes surrounding the face. Once a human has been infected, they will wear the winning smile. Not much else to say about this topic. Depressing and infecting light are one of the key mechanics of infectious smile. Infecting lights are usually thin bright white bricks scattered around the various stages. Once a player touches one of these bricks, they will become infected. Infecting light helps smilers infect humans quickly, as well as serve as somewhat of a safe place for them to regenerate health. Depressing lights are transparent orange blocks that are found in some of the stages, but are mainly known for being at Harpoon, Hallway, and Spawn, and the Fortress, aka the Wall. Humans are able to pass through the depressing light safely, while smilers will immediately die once they have touched the depressing light. The fortress, aka the wall, is located at the end of the mountain after all four game stages. It is a black brick wall with a gate of depressing light that can be toggled on and off. It contains a box of the main item the player is using and the mountain collapse safe zone. The fortress is the second safest place after spawn, but don't be fooled. If a few smilers get into the fortress, it will not be very safe anymore. The Swamp of Sadness is a special stage that has the chance of spawning after the mountain disaster. The swamp occasionally fills with water, which is the only way a smiler can become human again without dying. This map is very helpful if you're trying to get the All Weapons badge in one life, as it will cure you without making you die. The bat is the very first main item you will get once you start Infectious Smile. It's not bad for the starting item, since having a decent damage and stun time. Elimination Mode is an extra game mode in Infectious Smile. You can find the join button for this mode at spawn on the wall to the left of the depressing light barrier. Elimination Mode gives you a 25 second head start to hide and get items. Once the 25 seconds have passed, 5 people will get infected. You will have 5 minutes to survive. If Smilers get all humans before the time runs out, they win. If humans survive the whole 5 minutes, they win. Most of the time, the Smilers win, but it is still a great game mode.
Item skins are purchasable using smile coins. The higher the rarity of the crate, the more expensive it will be, as well as being more detailed. Skins are available in almost ev for, for almost every item, except the hatchet and packed ice. JDum is a YouTuber who has 8,000 plus subscribers and mainly makes infectious smile content. His most popular series of the infectious smile videos are the insert item or map experience videos. In those videos, he edits gameplay together with funny sound effects and memes while using the item or playing on the map chosen for the video. Right now, he mainly talks about new things that have been added to infectious smile. He's a pretty good YouTuber and you should check him out. Overseers, mainly referred to as big heads, are a special variant of smilers. These smilers have the equivalent of ESP hacks. They are able to see a player's torso through walls, white torsos being that of a smiler, and orange ones belonging to a human. Smilers who have this variant have a big advantage over humans, especially in elimination mode because many of the humans hide. The Darkness theme is the song that plays when a player purchases the Darkness World modifier. The song is very fitting for the darkness that surrounds you. The only thing that has me confused is where the song came from. Did one of the developers make the song or did they get it from somewhere else? If you know the answer, please let me know in the comments. Crafting is a yet to be released mechanic for the game. You will find a table at spawn that has the crafting area, but once you try and use it, a prompt will pop up that says, coming soon. I'm really curious to see how crafting will work. There are not many things around the maps that could be used for crafting, and smilers don't give anything but smile coins. We will just have to wait and see how the developers decide to make it work. The Smiler safe zone used to be a safe zone for, you guessed it, the Smilers. It was located beside the Harpoon hallway where a big metal door is now. The safe zone used to contain tasers and protest signs. Now you automatically get a sign once you become a Smiler and have a 2% chance of getting a taser. According to Infectious Smile fandom, the Smiler safe zone was removed because there was not enough fighting going around the map and there would be up to 17 people fighting at the Smile safe zone. The stage removal was probably for the best. The two handguns glitch is a glitch that may happen on the gun factory and gun facility stage, where the player can possibly pick up two handguns. This glitch has actually been around for a while now, making its first appearance on the 24th February of 2021, and has not been yet been patched. It's a pretty helpful glitch since you will have ex an extra handgun once the other runs out, but this should be patched. There's only one boombox in the entire game, making its showcase on the disco stage. Players can put in a song ID to the row to the boombox and play it as long as it has power. A lot of the time people fight over playing a song by entering another song ID while someone is playing something. Honestly, I think it's good that there's only one boombox in the game, due to other games that have boomboxes for purchase, having a lot of profane and loud music being blasted out of them constantly. With this boombox, yes, loud or profane music could be played, but it can only be heard in the disco room and can easily be turned off or have the song switched. This badge is the second hardest badge to obtain, the first being the porcupine badge. To obtain this badge, you must get every single weapon in your inventory, excluding the Tommy, in one life. This means if you get infected, you better reset if you have barely progressed, but if you have obtained many of the items, 
then hide somewhere safe and wait for the Swamp of Sadness if you're really dedicated. Only about 15,000 of the players who have played the game obtain this badge. Many players agree that the knife is the best weapon in Infectious Smile. The reason why it is so powerful is because it does a lot of damage, has a fast cooldown time, and can be used to escape a Smiler's grasp. And if you do get grabbed with it in your inventory, you have access to all your other items you can use against the Smiler. There is only one stage where you can obtain the knife, but all of the other ways you can obtain it are behind a Robux paywall. One of these is a one life use and the other is from VIP purchase where you will always have it with you until it breaks. But once you die, you can get another one. Many would argue that the Thompson is the most useless item in the game. Here's my opinion on why it is the worst. It only spawns in one stage which will have at least three smiles camping it out. You have to guess which five codes the safe could be correct, and only then will you get an item with horrible accuracy and damage. Do not even bother trying to get this item while you come across that stage. The Secret House is a house that is located underneath the map. You can either see it by using shift locked in the corner of the harpoon hallway and zooming out, or sometimes deep stages will have a sliver of the house sticking out. There isn't anything special about the house. It has a couple of windows and a bed. It used to have a laughable haha -ha NPC inside, but it has been gone for a while now. Okay, I'll be 100% honest, this is a joke entry. So, there are two songs that I know of on YouTube that are about the winning smile. One is made by B Slick, and the other is made by Awesome Place. They're just kinda there. There are many instances of people finding out-of-bounds objects in Infectious Smile. Some of these out-of-bounds objects are just leftover assets from stages, and some are easter eggs. For example, in the compromised facility, there's a big head decal on the outside of the wall, and outside of the outskirts, you can see some models of Rob and dummies that look like animations. For those of you who don't know, Rick May was the voice actor for the soldier character in Team Fortress 2. Rick sadly passed away on April 8, 2020, at the age of 79. In the basement of the catacombs, the creator left a statue of the TF2 soldier that has Rick May's name on it. Now this is just an opinion, but I think that the packed ice is the second best item in the game. My reasons for this are, it has a good chunk of damage, it has slightly more durability than the branch, and upon the final hit of durability, it freezes the Smiler for 3 seconds, allowing for people to gang up on them. I know not everyone will agree with this opinion, but I just wanted to share it. Have you ever realized that there are practically no exploiters on Infectious Smile? Personally, I have never seen an exploiter in person on Infectious Smile before. I have three reasons why I think there might be no exploiters in this game. 1. Maybe the player base of Infectious Smile are just really good about this stuff, knowing that people hate exploiters. 2. The anti-cheat on Infectious Smile is very well developed, so exploiters aren't able to do it as easily. Lastly, there's a report exploiter section on the Infectious Smile Discord server. Who knows, it could be because of all of the reasons, or maybe just one of them. But what I do know is that I'm happy that there are almost no exploiters in the game. I am sure many of you have played through the stage in Infectious Smile that has the Greek emergency alert system sound without even knowing it was there. In the reactor stage, once the core has been set to malfunction, the Greek EAS starts to play.
Now, no disrespect to the Greek EAS, but I think that it does fit the stage because it sounds like a malfunction in a facility. Once you start looking into the game further, you realize that it is constantly nighttime at the mountain. I'm not sure if it's always night to set the mood of the game since it is in the horror genre, or if it has anything to do with the lore. I think it being to do with the lore of the game might be far-fetched, but who knows. Right now, there are only four stages that have been removed from Infectious Smile, and I already talked about one of them, the Smile Safe Zone. The other three removed stages are Microchip, Spike Stage, and the Tall Room. Microchip looked like a big motherboard in a computer, and was only found in the testing versions of Infectious Smile. The reason why this stage never made it into the main game was because it was stolen or copied from Flood Escape 2. The Spike Stage was so complex that it was removed from the game. If you want to know more details on it, check the fandom Wikipedia. Lastly, the Tall Room was a stage consisting of tall pillars and platforms with hallways at the bottom. There was never a reason why the stage was removed. Some may think it was because there wasn't much combat or it was just a boring stage. During one of the weeks of, for the 2021 Metaverse event, Infectious Smile was part of the AJ Striker side of the event. You needed to survive one round, I think, and you would get his crate. Easy as that. Upon entering the game, you were greeted by AJ handing out the items while Rob was locked in a cage reaching for the key on the table. Once that week was over, Rob was out of the cage. If you went to the outskirts, you could see AJ Stryker's dismembered body. Over time, you would start to see that AJ became a skeleton. Either Rob escaped by himself, or someone let him out. In any case, he must have been pretty salty with AJ. Now this is the layer in the video where we will start to see mainly theories and lore from the game. Light Laboratory is one of the stages that adds to the lore of Infectious Smile. I don't know if many people knew about this, because I didn't until I was doing research, but in the large pit that is either infecting or depressing light, there is a little area in the wall with an infected bacon locked away. Maybe the bacon was part of the researchers' experiments, or they locked him away to study his behavior because he was infected. The compromised facility is the stage that by far has the most lore and infectious smile. On the desk at the end of the stage, there are notes that tell the story of the people that had once been in the facility. I will now read the important notes. Please keep in mind that parts of the notes are cut off by others. Sam, our technician, tried disassembling one of those cameras that get people infected. No luck with this mess, it's just an ordinary camera. If you are seeing this place, please save the data on the laptop. It'll have information on everything we know. We'll be going now. We had multiple breaches yesterday. We can only go forward from here. We can't fight them. They're getting relentless. We've had an attack five times last week. We might need to evacuate soon. I think the boards are starting to crack. Do we have any poles or something to make a temporary defense? Not looking good for one of us. Our weapons are in critical condition and defenses are starting to wear down. All we can do, pray for a good next cycle. Emily hasn't been in a good state since Evan died. We've been trying to convince her that it'll all be better. To be brutally honest, it probably won't. Tom found something pretty interesting today. He said that he saw the word wicked etched behind a door. Apparently it triggered something in him, and later he went insane. I'll admit that there's not much, but we're pretty much leaving this hideout forever. We're taking all the necessities so that so we're not leaving our weapons behind. The Tesla field logs also contribute to the game's lore. I won't read every single log, but I will summarize the gist of them. The logs begin with the writer talking about how the construction is going well and eventually it gets finished, but they have to postpone for a small time because seismic activity was detected. The writer goes on to talk about how they are fixing issues and taking tests on the project. 
and the writer believes that they may have discovered something. Guards captured an attacker codenamed Rhesus. He was pretty happy while attacking them, probably a smiler. Then the last two logs say that there was a population increase in people like Rhesus and that they are going to abandon the project. Now my theory on these logs is that they come first chronologically in the infectious smile lore. I believe this is the case because Rhesus seems to be the first smiler that they have ever encountered. They also go on to say that there has been an increase in people like Rhesus, also meaning that they haven't seen this before and it's becoming more common. The last log says that they need to halt the project because of those intruders, so obviously they haven't seen something like this before. WCKD is an easter egg that, is, that used to be found in the light laboratory behind the door with the researcher. It is unknown why the developers removed this. WCKD comes into play with another topic in the iceberg, but all I can say about the, it now is that it made someone named Tom go insane, as mentioned in the facility notes. The NPC Rob can sometimes wear players' face accessories, but I have no clue how you get this to happen. If you make your avatar look exactly the same as Rob, and I mean exactly, then something interesting will happen when you infect someone. When you infect someone wearing a face accessory as Rob, you will equip the item to your face just like the NPC Rob can sometimes. Now I don't know if it's an easter egg that the developers added or if it's a bug. I feel like it might be a bug because you have to have the same outfit as NPC Rob, so maybe the game thinks you are the NPC and it equips the accessory to you? What does it all mean? Is a note found underneath the table at the dead end of the warhead silo. There are posters of smilers and other things all over the dead end, so it can be assumed that whoever was up there went insane. Nomads are a mysterious group in infectious smile who don't have much information on them. The wall of the electromagnetic container stage is the easiest place to find the word nomads. The writing on the wall says Nomad 74, Smiler 0. This means there are still 74 nomads, but does this mean the nomads are just another word for humans, or are they a separate group? I think that they are a separate group of humans that supply people with weapons. This is because, on a note in the compromised facility, it said something about trading with nomads. For further proof of my theory, one of the shipment containers is labeled AK-47s, a type of weapon. Rhesus was most likely the first to get infected, because in the Tesla field logs, he was given his own codename, and the people seemed to not have known about the infection yet. One of the notes in the compromised facility says, Sam, our technician, tried disassembling one of those cameras that get people infected. No luck with this mess, it's just an ordinary camera. So these people found out that the cameras are just plain old cameras. This most likely means that the light is what infects people. The only odd thing about this is that everywhere where there is light, there is also a camera with it. But the cameras are just cameras. Do the Deed is referring to the sign found in the secret basement of Smile Street. Yeah, so as I'm recording the video for the Infectious Smell Iceberg, I was getting footage for um, just background footage, and I discovered that Smile Street has changed. I don't know if the basement is still there, but it looks like it might have been removed, so don't, don't quote me on that, but it could have been removed, it might not have been just have to see. The only way to get into this basement is by clipping into it using a glitch or hacking. Don't do that. Once the base, once in the basement, you will find a sign that says do the deed with a red glowing brick in front of it and red winning smiles on the walls.
I believe that the red brick is a kill brick, and the sign is telling the person who clipped down there to do the deed of dying, since there's no other way out. A user by the name of Half Happy, Half Sad wrote a blog post October 15th, 2021 on the Wikipedia fandom about what they think the lore of Infectious Smile is. Mainly, they just give the game a bit of a backstory, but there will be a link in the description to this blog post so you can read it for yourself. On October 24th, 2021, a fandom user by the name of Rose Skaldir made a comment on the Compromise Facility page, giving their theory as to why they think Infectious Smile is inspired by Maze Runner. They wrote, Okay. So I think there's a Maze Runner reference in here. First, take a look at Sheet 14. Tom, obviously could be a reference to Thomas, and then WCKD, an abbreviation for Wicked. And then, there's the whole infection thing which is a lot like the flare virus. So yes, I'm a big Maze Runner nerd, but those are my thoughts. This comment does make a lot of sense. There were a lot of Maze Runner references in the 2021 fall update for the game. This is the final layer of the iceberg. The last three entries are the most dark or out there theories on the game. Let's get right into it. One could say that this is a joke entry, but to me it's not. I feel like when I looked at the Wikipedia page for the game around a year ago, I saw a samurai type NPC in the NPC section. I've tried looking for it again, but no results have come. If you remember this, too, or know about it, then let me know in the comments. Or you know, I could just be crazy. PM606 is a small horror game where you are thrown into a backrooms type maze full of winning smile walls. There are 20 sub-levels in total, each one getting more difficult the deeper you go. There are puzzles, entities that chase you, and more. Mr. Ferrante has a video covering that PM covering what PM606 is in more depth. The link to the his video will be in the description in the top right corner now. This is a theory that I have come up with on Rob. Since we have an idea that nomads supply weapons based on the notes found in the compromised facility and the markings on the wall of the storage house, it might be safe to say that Rob is a nomad. His sole purpose in the game is to supply players with weapons to defend themselves from the Smilers, just like nomads supply people with weapons. And there we have it, the whole infectious smile iceberg has been covered. If any of you think something is wrong or needs fixing, feel free to express yourself in the comments below. This iceberg is not up to date with the newest updates of Infectious Smile, so there are some things that I haven't covered in this video. Thank you all for watching till the end, and have a great day.